guy speaking to my heart, he's speaking. And uh, the guy we had, uh, I had a time to wait. But he said, the word of surrender. You know, for you and I, I, I don't know your story. God knows your story. And maybe Harry, maybe he was a healthy relationship. Maybe it's just Harry, something really is Harry and I said, maybe God will. But he said, to surrender to me. I love you. Yeah. So I surrendered that way. Really. Surrendered everything before the Lord. Told me he surrendered my heart. Surrendered the situation. I could truly really experience his peace. And I could continue to do what we love to do. But most importantly, what God wants to do with me. He said, son, in this era of your life, you need to grow. Your faith needs to grow. You need to trust in him. You need to surrender everything. I think, okay, Lord, you wait. Why did it? Right? Everybody has that, right? You start to do things on our own. And, and, and then before you know it, I surrender. Okay, Lord, what do you have me? What, what are you trying to teach me? I always have it that way. And God, he said, yeah, just surrender. I surrender. So, Heavenly Father, I just pray right now for your children, Lord Jesus. You already know my heart. You know that the beginning and the end of their story, oh God. That you are faithful, Lord Jesus, uh, Father God. We surrender everything before you, Lord. Our heart belongs to you. That you be glorified. That we can worship you in spirit and truth. That we can truly experience your peace, your understanding. So bless your people, oh God. Strengthen us in every way.
heal. We want to be healed. Everybody wants to be healed. We need to seek the healer. Jesus Christ is the healer and the church. He has a perfect plan for you and I. Surrender everything before you, Lord. Just follow in the name of Lord Jesus. Because Lord, I believe.
was asking the Lord, I'm like, what are you, what are you speaking to your people here? And he just pointed me to a verse. It's out of, it's out of uh, Matthew 11, 40, uh, sorry, 25. And as the children are coming up, he reminded me that I'm going to pray for them. But here's the verse. It says this, at that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and the understanding and reveal them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. And um, for those of us who maybe know that you have nephews or nieces or you have children yourself, you know that there's, uh, there's an age where children are completely dependent on others. Isn't that true? And Jesus says, Father, you revealed yourself to these who are childlike. And then he says this, Skipping down a few verses in verse 28, he says, Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And so, Father, we just want to pray. I, I, I feel like this word is for someone here today who has been overwhelmed and overworked and exhausted and maybe just are feeling the weight of the world on them. And, Lord, I just thank you that your word says, you say, come to me. Come to me. Surrender. Come. I'm the healer. Come to me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And so, I just want to just speak to the hearts of those that maybe are here, and maybe you're feeling the weight of that right now, and I just want to ask you, invite you, to just declare to the Lord in your heart today, Lord, I want to give everything to you. Even before we hear the message, I just feel like God is stirring faith in this place. If that's you today, I just want to invite you to just say, Lord, I want to give everything to you, Lord God. I don't want to hold back nothing. It's all you. You got me. Yeah, I can't. I can't, but you can, Lord. You can. And so, Father, we just thank you so much for moving in hearts to, to, to this, morning, this evening. And, Lord, we just ask for you to continue to do so in Jesus' name. Hey, good morning, church family. How is it going? So good to be with you. If we haven't met yet, I'm Jared. I get to serve as the lead pastor at our church. So humble to do that. And I'm so grateful that we get to be with you, whether you're here with us for the first time or you're with us all the time. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, I'm just cruising here this morning at the park, walking my mother and father-in-law's dog, Joey. We're just cruising. And wonder if you could take a walk with us this morning. Um, I wanna share with you some really neat things God is doing in our church body. But hey, first, before I do that, I wanna just, again, say welcome to those of you that are guests here this morning with us. Maybe this is your first or second time joining us. We would love to get to know you a little better. In the website, there's a tab that says new here. Please press that tab so that we can be praying for you and we can just be um, able to just know your name. Here at Hope Chapel Milani, your name is important. You're not a number, you're a name to us. And we want to be a community. Our prayer is that this community, this church could be a community where you feel like you belong even before you believe. And so please do that before you leave. We also want to just take a moment to just thank God for His provisions as a community, as a church community. And so we're going to just ask God's blessing over our tithes and our offerings. Many of you give to the mission and the vision of this church. And so thank you so much for doing that. Let's bow our heads, let's pray and thank the Lord for His goodness in our community. And so bow your heads with me, let's pray. Father, thank you so much again for your goodness to our church. We thank you for your provisions. You're a generous God, Lord. You give so generously. And Lord, as, as you give generously, Lord God, you give it to us so that we can not just keep it, Lord God, but that we can give it through us. You give through us, not just to us, but through us to um, be generous to the world around us. And so Lord, we thank you. We, we bless you for that. And we just thank you for the offering that's coming in today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, family, like I mentioned, a lot of amazing things God is doing in our church family. We want to share that with you. One of those things is um, something that's happening next Saturday. Next Saturday, October 29th, right after service, we're having this thing called a Team Hope Paina. Team Hope Paina. What is a Paina? Paina just in Olelo Hawaii, in Hawaiian, it just means party. We're going to have a party. 
And, and who's Team Hope? Team Hope is anybody who volunteers in any way in our church body. Or maybe you're a small group leader. Or maybe you're one that's just interested in finding ways to get connected in our church using your purpose for God's glory. And so I want to encourage you to come out to this. There's going to be food. There's going to be some worship. And they were also going to have a, an opportunity to talk story and just thank God for 2022 and then look forward to 2023. So join us for that. It's going to be, again, October 29th, right after service. Um, there on Saturday evening at service. Um, and then we're also, again, wanting to encourage you to sign up um, on our webpage because we want to get an accurate head count and so of who's coming so we can provide enough food. So be sure to do that um, today before you leave here today, okay? Also want to mention to you, something that's very powerful for you ladies out there we are having a women's breakfast coming up on november 6th at 8 a.m at big city diner man this is going to be a great time for you ladies to just hang out and 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 talk story and fellowship but also just be encouraged to get to know women that love jesus and will love you joey He's just, he's just pulling me along. I'm just getting pulled along today. And so, hey, join Chiomi. If you want more information about that, join Pastor Chiomi as um, she hosts this at Big City Diner at 8 a.m., okay, on November 6th. All right, and the last thing I want to share with you is just opportunities. Man, God, during the season, gives us a lot of opportunities to be a blessing. And we wanted to be, as a church, we wanted to help um, guide you if you're looking because there's, there's so much opportunity, so much ways to be a blessing. But there, here, here are three things that our church is doing that you can be a part of in um, these next months, these holiday seasons. And so one is we're going to be collecting um, as much lightly used socks and new socks as possible. We partner with River of Life um, Mission and, and they give out socks during these cold months to those that are houseless all around their islands. And we want to invite us to be a part of that. And so um, our sister Jan Kappis leads that. This co it's called Socktober. So bring in your lightly used socks or your new socks. You can buy new socks. Bring it on October 29th. That's that Sunday, I mean that Saturday that we we're going to gather for the Team Hope Paina and bring it there and we'll have that to give to Jan to bring to the River of Life mission. And so that's going to be awesome. Another opportunity is a, a toy and gift drive that we're doing for hug, a Hugs family in Mililani as well as any adoptive child in Mililani. We have um, a, a, a heart for children that um, are, are in need this holiday season or families that are in need this holiday season. So we want to invite you to come alongside and partner with us so that we can be a blessing in that way. Um, you can contact Pastor Chiyomi and she would love to give you more details of what kind of thing they're looking for and how we can be a blessing as a church family in that way. All right? Well, family, I am excited because today I get to introduce to you a good friend of mine who's no stranger to our church family. He's part of our teaching team. His name is Jamin Hebert, and um, he is going to continue this series, The Helper, where we're looking at the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so would you help me welcome, church family, our friend, Jamin. Let's go, family. Woo! But uh, we have been traveling, so we went back to Boston, where my wife is from, and the East Coast, and had a good time visiting with uh, family, and got my, uh, my son to meet her grandmother, Kofo, she's Chinese, and she had a great time with her little, her youngest grandchild. And so it was a good, good trip, nice to be in the cold for a minute, but it's always nice, after vacation, at least you're coming home to paradise, right? It's always good to come back home. The, uh, it's not at all, like my first trip to Boston. I went to Boston in 2019, and I was just dating my wife at the time, and I was going back to meet her family. 
And if you know, that's a little bit stressful to find out like who, what they think of me. It's a little bit awkward. Who's this guy who's keeping their sister and their daughter in Hawaii? And who is, uh, you know, they're, they're judging me the same way I was judging my sister's boyfriend. And you know, there's something to my way about that. And uh, so it was, it was really awkward. And you know, who's this guy from Hawaii? Doesn't look Hawaiian at all. So we're going back there. And just to make it a little bit more strange, we, we get there and her mother is out of town. And so we go to pick her up at the airport. But my dear sweet girlfriend, who is now my dear sweet wife, did not tell her I was coming to Boston. So I get out of the airport to help her with her bags. Surprise! I'm your daughter's boyfriend whom you've never met and you're not expecting tonight. So that was really fun. The, uh, but she was very, very gracious. And uh, now that I have given, uh, helped give her another grandbaby, I think she likes me now. So we're, we're doing pretty good. But that was, I mean, I gotta tell you, that was, that was really hard for me. I mean, it was, just, it was just so awkward. It seems a little odd, probably coming from where I'm standing right now, but I'm actually an introvert. How many introverts are out there? Okay, how many of you are so introverted you didn't even want to raise your hand? <laughs> yeah, okay. How many of you are so introverted you thought about moving to Wyoming and becoming a professional hermit? I really did, until I found out it, um, it snows six months out of the year in Wyoming. It really does. But I never want to draw attention to myself. You know when they say, turn your, your phone to silent? My phone is always on silent. I never want my phone to ring in, ring in public. It would be humiliating for me. I remember the last time it happened. It was 12 years ago in Bangor, Boy. I know exactly where I was. It's like, whose phone is that? Oh, it's mine. And it's just, it's humiliating to draw attention to myself. When I was younger, um, my parents' friends had a Bible quiz team, and they invited me to come on. I said, no, of course, because there were people there. And then later on, they asked me again, and just very nice people, and I looked away as she was talking to me, and my mom was like, that's so rude, why did you do that? And what I didn't tell my mom until many years later, like, I looked away because I was about to cry. That level of connection was way too much for me at 12. And actually, even a little bit older, <laughs> several years later, I was at, Lowe's, and I was walking down the aisle, and I saw somebody I thought I knew, and down the other aisle, I go. And the thing is, I like that guy. Like, to this day, I like him. He's a good friend of mine, but I wasn't ready to say hi. So just fair warning, if you see me in times or say hi, I'm sneaking into the freezer section. It's not, I don't work there. I just probably seen you, and I'm not ready. Later on, we'll warm up, and, and we'll say hi. It's just, that's... For me, that's just a little too much interaction. I'm very, very shy. I mean, even just a few years ago, just the story that's more recent, um, I work construction, so I needed good construction boots. I found, um, there's this place in White Camilo that has, they say they can help you get good boots and they try it on and they do all these things. So I went down there, I drove into the parking lot, I sat in there and I thought, my boots aren't that bad, and I drove away. <laughs> For a year, I wore those same boots. They're like that's just too much interaction for me to do. I can't talk to people. I can't do anything like that. If there's anybody who needs boldness in their life, it's me. And some of you are just naturally bold. Some of you, I mean, you mail invitations to your problems and invite them for lunch, and you're just ready to go. I'm not like that. Some of you are probably more timid and reserved, like me. You know, you're just trying to get through life. I know about you, you know about me, everything is fine. But I know some of you have been through these things where it's, it gets really stressful. I'm sure all the married guys here remember the time you had to work up the courage to talk to your future father-in-law, ask him for his blessing, or maybe the time you had to work up the courage to, to talk to a girl and you had your lines rehearsed and you talked to her and it sounds totally rehearsed, been there. Or maybe um, the first day of school, or the time that um, you had to take the driver's portion of your road, to road test for your driver's license, or maybe the time that the, the pastor asked you to give a testimony or a presentation, and you're just like, not sure I can handle that pressure. I'm not sure I can handle that level of anxiety. Like, what's going to happen? And after it happens, if you're like me, you're thinking about it for three, four months after the fact. Because it's just really that 
terrifying to you to interact with people, to step out of your comfort zone, and to be something that uh, is a little bit, a little bit more bold than you think you have. And there's a moment where you have to rise to the challenge, and you have to look at that fear, and you have to crush it. And it requires boldness. It requires boldness to step up and to look at you and look at that fear and say, I will not let that overcome me. And no matter which group of people you fall into, the outgoing people or the shy people, I want to challenge your idea of what boldness is. And I want to help give you some ideas on how to be more bold and more courageous. But before we do that, would you pray with me? Father, we just thank you for tonight and this safe place where we can share the oddities and idiosyncrasies of our life. And more importantly, we can share how you change us and how you work in us. So we just continue to welcome you here. We welcome Holy Spirit to come and move in our hearts and in our lives to show us the purpose and the plans you have for us and how we can partner with you to become who you have made us to be. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Last week, uh, we did the third message of the series, The Helper, and Pastor Brett mentioned that he talked about the gift of tongues, and again, you can look at that on YouTube. It's a really good message, kind of overview of that, and where that all takes place is in Acts chapter 2. And so what I want to do is pick up in uh, Acts 2, 14, and you can just follow along as I read. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and give ear to my words. And this is the beginning of the sermon, and you can read the rest later. But Peter gets up and he shares the gospel with boldness. He shares the good news of Christ. He shares the history of all that's how that happens, and it's a great message. But as Peter gets up to share this, it's with a different boldness than he's had in the past. He knows he's in danger. They had been hiding out for like seven weeks knowing that people are looking for this group of people who was with this Jesus guy who everybody said has been raised from the dead. And they're being hunted. But now the Holy Spirit has come and partnered with Peter, and he's speaking with boldness and with power. And then a couple chapters later in Acts 4, Peter is again speaking with boldness. And he gets threatened by the community leaders. Now they know who he is. They know his name. And they tell him not to do this, and they're actually threatening him. And his response is to pray, and we'll read the prayer in Acts 4.29, and it's a fascinating prayer. It says, And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when, you had, and when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. And what's interesting about this prayer is it wasn't a prayer for protection. It wasn't a prayer for safety or even peace. Because that's what I would have been praying for. Father, please protect us. Please put your edge of protection and we have all those things. That's what I would have prayed for. But his prayer was for boldness. He says, what I really want from you, God, is not to be safe. I want to be bold. And God answered. He sent Holy Spirit to give him boldness. And this seems a departure from Peter. This is regular M.O. He was one of those outgoing people. It seems from Scripture that he was always ready to speak up, never shy, always ready to shove his sandal directly in his mouth. He always was ready to, to talk, to speak on Jesus' behalf, uh, rebuking Jesus, protecting Jesus, cutting someone's ear off, all for Jesus, of course. This is who he was, and he was just seemed to be full of bravado. An impulse. But that's not what boldness is. It's not on impulse. It's about thoughtfully putting yourself in positions that are hard or even dangerous. To be brash is to draw attention to yourself. To have everyone look at you. To try and get people to affirm the vision you have of yourself. It's to have an air of invincibility. And it's from that place you tend to look at people and judge them and sit in judgment. And you give no thought for those around you. That's a brash person. Bold 
is to recognize that there is a very real danger, but to proceed anyways. Because you know the value of what needs to be done. Peter early on was telling Jesus what to do, making a scene wherever he goes, caught up in the emotion of the moment. But after Holy Spirit comes, he speaks up knowing full well it could cost him his life. In fact, Jesus told him, you're going to die. And he told him how you're going to die. And this is a different perspective that Peter has. And now he knows that he has something and he has to share it, even if it could cost him anything or everything. It's not bold to say something that 95% of the room agree with. That's not very bold at all. It doesn't take anything. In the same way, you cannot be brave unless there is fear. You can't really be bold unless there's a consequence for not being bold. It's ironic that one of the biggest hindrances to being bold is fear. Because it's fear that gives us the opportunity to be brave in the first place. That's your chance to step up. Boldness is recognizing that the value of what you're doing outweighs the consequences. I want to read that again. Boldness is recognizing that the value of what you're doing outweighs the consequences. That's when you know you're being bold. You can white knuckle this, and some people do, and a lot of people do. Like, I can make this, but I think there's a better way. I know that when we invite the Holy Spirit to come, He gives us the strength, He gives us the boldness, and with His Spirit in you, that's when you overcome fear. In uh, 2 Timothy it says this, I'm reading from the Amplified Version because it's so good. <clears throat> 2 Timothy 1.7 For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. That's what Holy Spirit gives us. A spirit of calm, mind, self-control, not of fear. This is why he gives us boldness to fulfill what you were born to do. You were born for a purpose. And it's going to take boldness to fulfill that purpose. But as I alluded to, boldness is not always what we were taught and told it was. And I'm going to expand on that with a little illustration. Thank you. 
was uh, some, some years ago, I was praying for my cousin, and um, I felt the Lord said, you are as bold as a lion. And uh, she was a girl, so I was like, maybe, maybe a lioness would be better. And when I thought that, the verse that immediately came to mind was Proverbs 28, 1, where it says, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Now, male lions are brash. They got that big mane and everything. But the female lion is the true hunter. Males can't get along with each other. Uh, once one comes in, um, they have to have a little battle to see who's, who's top cat in that case. But the females strategize. They work together. They collaborate. The male's lion can roar, and they can be heard five miles away. But I'm much more concerned about the quiet female that's right behind me. I'm not saying this was my mom, but some moms are like this. When they're yelling, you're okay. It's when they stop. It's time to go. It's not the flashy mane of the lion or the witty trash talking that's important. Uh, it's the executioner's hand that's the steadiest. Someone that's going to do it has a confidence to move and doesn't have to talk about it. Going back to Proverbs 28, the word that's usually translated lion can mean a city with walls. Okay? A city with walls. And I'm going to tell you why that's bold uh, with this illustration. Um, when I was younger, I played a very politically incorrect game called Cowboys and Indians. Don't judge the 1985 version of me by today's standards. I don't know if people play cow, cow people and Native Americans anymore, but we used to. And our favorite person to play was Daniel Boone. He was a hunter and trapper from the 1700s, and he had all kinds of adventures. He was captured by the Shawnee uh, people. He was eventually adopted by them, and then he found a way to escape. When his daughter was uh, captured by them, he single-handedly rescued her. His life is said to have been the inspiration for the book, The Last of the Mohicans, which is a great read if you want to do that. And he just had one adventure after another. He and his wife had 10 children out on the frontier. And he, he once said, I've never been lost, but I was mighty turned around once for three days. He was a brave man. But his real claim to fame is uh, from a picture, it's a famous picture of him going through the Cumberland Gap. He wasn't the first person to do it, but he did something that no one else did. And I'll show, there's a picture of it, I'm going to show you. He took his family, and so you can see there prominently on the horses, his wife and, and several families together. And that's a really significant thing, because lots of men came through but when a man comes through, a trapper comes through, he's probably going to leave. But when a family comes through, they're going to stay. They, they also know that this is not a war party. You don't bring women on a war party. And so it made a huge impact. It said, we are staying. And this trip through Cumberland Gap at that time, that's like us going to the moon. I mean, it was a big deal. Once you come, you're not going back. You have made the commitment. You cut all ties and you were going to set down roots. And so they were saying, here we are, we're not going anywhere. And they set up a home, and they set up forts, and they put, of course, their, their fences around it. And it wasn't brash. It was just super bold. And it didn't even need to say anything about it. Because once you set that up, you realize, this is the stand I'm taking, and I can't be pushed off yet. And so in Proverbs, it's saying, we as Christians are like villages with walls. We take a stand. We set up our homes to live in truth. We proclaim the places we go and live as a part of the kingdom of God. We hold our values. We stick to our values. That's bold. It's quiet. It's firm. It's letting these forces of darkness around you say, that, tell them that you're here to stay. You cannot move me. That doesn't need to be yelled. 
It needs to be shown. And it takes a lot to do that. It takes confidence and trust. The word that I wrote up here is bakah. And that's a Hebrew word. And how we get the word bold. It means trust. And you know that trust is the best way to build a relationship, right? Well, the relationship is the best way to build trust. The relationship with the Holy Spirit is an incredible way to build trust. It builds courage. It builds boldness. And so I want you to know where I found courage, where I found boldness. Boldness to start a life group. Boldness to ask a girl to marry me. Boldness to speak in front of you. Boldness to draw something that I like to do, but I'm still really nervous. Where I get that boldness from, and it comes from trusting that what God has put in me has value and needs to come out. I had to recognize, like I said earlier, the value of what God placed in me outweighs the consequences. The value that God placed in me outweighs the consequences. The consequences of fear, the consequences of anxiety, the consequences of discomfort. And I like to say that what God has placed in you outweighs the consequences of fear and anxiety and discomfort. I don't have to know you to know that's true. My destiny is bigger than my discomfort. I don't like that. But it's true. My destiny is bigger than my discomfort. And even when I know this, and I try to live this, I still am scared to death most of the time. And so that's where the Holy Spirit comes back in. And some of you, I mean, actually all of you, you have something unique that needs to be expressed. And it needs to be expressed not in a brash way, not in a way like everyone else. It needs to be expressed in your way that has to come out. I saw Pastor Chiomi get up here and dance. If God asked me to do that, I think I'd fall dead. That is, that's her expression. And it's amazing, right? Yeah. But God is asking you to express in your way. Boldness in your way. It's boldness how he has made you. How can you set a wall, set a village with a wall that lets the enemy know, here I take this stand. I cannot be moved. That's bold. Last week I read this very sad story about a 16-year-old girl who's having some mental issues and emotional problems. And um, she walked out in the traffic. And the doctor, so, quiet of some sort, said, Well, how bold that she chose to end her life. That's what Satan wants you to think is bold. He wants you to think that bold is leaning down, being quiet, going with the 95% or whatever it is, giving up. That's not what God has for you. Because your destiny is bigger than your discomfort. There's a lion inside of you. You know that there is something incredible that God has placed inside of you. Even before you're saved, he does this, but after you're saved now, you can start to partner with the Holy Spirit to have this lion start to not grow. Just set up shop. Say, we're not moving off of this mountain. So I, as you know, I, obviously I've been very bold today. Standing up here has been very bold for me. Saying hi is very bold for me. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to pull them. And this isn't going to be, I'm going to raise my hand. Um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to pray for you. And if you want the Holy Spirit to partner with you to be bold, I'm going to invite the worship team back up now. And we're going to have a prayer. And if you want the Holy Spirit, and this is, you can be a brash person now. You can be an outgoing person. You can be an introvert. Hey. I look at myself as an introvert and I see it now as a gift. Okay, this is how God made me. I'm okay with this. But it's only because of things like this. Now I know that I don't have to be like someone else.
Being an extrovert sounds extremely exhausting. But God has made me an introvert. So this is a gift for me. And so no matter what type of person you are, if you want Holy Spirit to partner with me, with you, I want to pray for you. And so if you want that, could you please stand now? And I'll pray for you. If you would like Holy Spirit to partner with, them, with you.